So what are some of the ways that you can bring in a steady cash flow? What are some of the best ways for you to bring in a steady cash flow? I think the number one first way that you have to concentrate on is you have to stop wasting your time with one-shot deal customers. It's almost like, duh, but so many people spend so much time banging their head against the wall and thrashing, trying to stand on their nose to deal with all these pain in the butt one-shot deal customers. You know who they are. The residential users, the home-based businesses that promise you the sun, the moon, the earth, the stars, and that they call you once and you never hear from again. That is the biggest resource drain, the biggest distraction in your business that you can possibly have. Stop wasting all that time with the one-shot deal customers. Second, I want you to stop putting yourself in ultra hyper competitive bidding situations that force you to completely destroy your profit margins. You don't want to be there. You really need to be reaching your prospects much, much earlier on in the sales cycle before they even know, know that they have a need, before they go diving for Google to find the dirt cheapest computer provider they possibly can, or before they go diving for the yellow pages, you need to reach them at that point in the sales, sales cycle where they have not yet even identified the need. They haven't certainly haven't identified the provider, and you want to be training them to know that you are the only considerable choice that they should even remotely think of in their local area when it comes to getting their outsourced IT support, when it comes to taking care of the desktop support and network integration and customization and training and upgrades, providing that whole soup to nuts outsourced virtual IT solution, anything and everything having to do with their IT needs. And again, the name of the game is reaching them much, much earlier on in the sales cycle so you can plant those seeds. How do you do that? There's a number of different ways. You should be getting involved and active with, with uh, three or four different related organizations in your local area where other small business owners are, and uh, managers hang out. This must, might be something like a, a business development or economic development or, or a chamber of commerce type of organization. You should be looking to get involved with at least one type of uh, lead sharing organization like a LATIP or BNI, where if there's no chapters of those in your area, the local equivalents. You should be looking to get involved with any related user groups or, or computer uh, integrator computer reseller related groups in your area so you can build up a network of peers and specialized deeply niched experts to pass leads back and forth with. If you have a local alumni association for where you went to school in the area, by all means, that might be another great place to meet like-minded small business owners and managers that you can network with. If you're part of a minority group or religious group that has a business organization, by all means, go check that out. It's a matter of not putting all your eggs in one basket and developing deep relationships that position you and your company as the one and only experts that folks should turn to, ex expert uh, small business decision makers, non-technical small business owners and managers in your local area that have IT needs on a very regular basis. Usually you want to qualify them by size. You want to make sure that they're big enough to be able to afford your professional recommendations. This usually means somewhere between 10 and, and 100 employees, but not so big to have a, a large in-house IT department that doesn't need that a total outsourced solution. So usually 10 to 100 PCs within a 30 to 60 minute driving radius of where you're located, making sure that there's a good platform match, making sure they're in an industry or a business niche that you can comfortably support. And of course, finding out how they are currently getting their IT support and how they've gotten their IT support in the past. So you definitely want to reach them much earlier on in the sales cycle. You want to plant the credibility seeds, these awareness seeds, uh, through things like publishing white papers, writing articles in, in, the, the, in the local newspaper or newsletters, uh, going out and doing speaking engagements for local groups that get you in front of small business decision owners and, and uh, owners and managers. And of course, the great thing with being in front of the group is they're doing all the marketing work. They're getting, they're filling up all the seats with, with uh, uh, the right kind of audience. You don't have to do all that work. And of course, there's a very strong implied endorsement as well. Of course, you can do your own seminars too. Once you build up your own in-house mailing list, once you start networking with other trusted business advisors, why not have a jointly sponsored seminar where you get together with a local accountant and he or she talks about tax saving strategies and you talk about IT strategies. You talk for 15, 20 minutes, you answer some questions and you get a chance to cross pollinate your, uh, your customer and prospect list together. You want to make sure that all of your, also this is another big thing to, to bring in more steady cash flow, is you want to make sure that all of your marketing and promotional efforts are directed at reaching targeted small business owners and managers. All, all too often when I ask people, who's your target market? They say, small business. Well, that's like saying you're marketing to everyone. And the reality is, unless you have the marketing budget of a Fortune 1000 kind of company, 
uh, who will generally spend more on marketing before lunchtime on New Year's Day than you'll spend the entire year, you need to be a lot smarter about who you reach. And it's much, much easier to approach marketing segments one little slice at a time and small, readily identifiable segments like dentists or health club owners or restaurant owners or, or accountants or chiropractors or uh, country clubs or, or hotel managers, whatever it is, because once you've identified one segment at a time, and obviously you want to couple that with having some experience in that segment, with having some great testimonials and case studies that demonstrate your expertise in working with those kinds of uh, small businesses. Once you've identified those segments, it's much, much easier to come up with a offer and to come up with marketing pieces that resonate with them, that solve the, the biggest problem that's going on in their mind, that really hit them right between the eyes and show them that you know exactly what you're talking about and what it takes to make a, a business tick like theirs. Otherwise, you're just kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall and, and trying to see what sticks, and that's really not the best approach for your marketing efforts. And it's kind of like if you're trying to market to everyone, think about a car manufacturer that's advertising on Nickelodeon or on um, Playhouse Disney or, or on the Cartoon Network, and you know, most of their advertising efforts are going to 5- and 10-year-olds who are seven, eight, ten years away from being at the point where they'd ever consider shopping for a car. So make sure you don't do the same thing with your business. Make sure that, you know, like 90% of your marketing efforts aren't going to the wrong place. You want to, you know, obviously try to get 100% of your marketing efforts going to the right place. And, you know, there's a number of things you can do with organizations, uh, white papers, speaking, seminars, meaningful participation at trade shows, very targeted marketing efforts, direct marketing effort, direct response marketing efforts. And, and one of my favorites is, is building relationships with local trusted business advisors in your community, accountants, attorneys, management consultants, uh, graphic design artists, SEO consultants, um, PHP, MySQL kind of developers. So not only trusted business advisors, but deeply niche technology consultants that already have pre-existing relationship with, with the same exact small business owners and managers that you want to get a foot in the door with. What's in it for them? Well, you know, you're a great resource person as well because as you're growing your business, you can recommend them and bring them in as well. And of course, you need to talk with each individual and decide how you want to work the arrangement, whether you're going to pay them a finder's fee or a commission or a referral fee or whether there's enough uh, referrals going back and forth that they feel that they're being uh, made whole with the whole thing. But the big thing is build those relationships. It can be one of the most powerful uh, marketing sales weapons you can possibly have, incredibly highly qualified leads coming your way that are largely pre-sold on, on you as the solution. Many times when they're recommending you, uh, you're doing them a favor because you're validating in their clients' minds that they provided a, a good choice. And on, on top of that, many times if they're a specialist, your rate is considerably lower. You're getting them off the hook from having to answer IT problems that they really don't want to answer. And again, you're getting a much less price sensitive decision maker. So you'll be able to get higher hourly billing rates, a much quicker sales cycle because there's a lot less friction. You take those two things together, it's a beautiful thing. And what does it cost you to build those kind of relationships? What, being a sport and, and taking a few people out for lunch or breakfast every so often or taking them to the ball game or something like that? It's one of those things that a few hundred dollars a year or your local currency equivalent can really make a huge, huge dent in building those relationships that essentially become like your uh, unofficial sales force. So, Again, it's really, really important to make sure that you size qualify all your prospects to make sure that they're big enough to be able to afford your professional recommendations, but not so large that they have a big in-house IT department and they don't need a generalist. They really need a very deeply niche specialist. Think Goldilocks, not too big, not too small. But again, we've been talking about what are some of the ways that you can bring in a steady cash flow. We talked about the importance of making sure that you don't allow one-shot deal customers to become a big distraction. We talked about the importance of uh, targeted marketing activities. We talked about the importance of, of lead qualification and a big, big focus on the relationships and the quality of the client as opposed to the quantity of the clients. All too often people get sucked into this big ego thing of, oh, I have dozens and dozens or hundreds of clients. It's not about how many you have, it's how profitable they are for the long haul and duration. But thanks for tuning in today to learn more about how you can bring in a, a steady cash flow, how you can sell more steady, high paying clients on your IT provider business. We appreciate your time and attention. We look forward to hearing your success stories real soon. Take care.